Okay, for those of you who are about to go in a walker boot or you're already in a walker boot, maybe you've had a fracture, maybe had surgery, maybe you've had an Achilles rupture or repair, then this video is for you. We're gonna go through the range of boots and how to put one on, what to do with the boot as far as getting it tight and snug. There's a few little bits inside boots that you need to be aware of as well as how to walk properly with it and we'll go through some other things. But first of all, let's just have a look at the range of boots. Now, these ones are for little kitties. So these are pediatric boots. You'll notice these are obviously clearly a lot smaller, but with the pediatric boots, you'll find they don't have the air pump. So those ones are for kids that have minor fractures in their lower leg or massive ankle sprains and they just need to be immobilized. The thing about with kids and ankle sprains is that they tend to run on them all the time, they last a long time. If you can immobilize it, if it's a bad ankle sprain, a boot is awesome because they don't need to be in it for too long. Um, but also these are really good if they don't actually need to be in a plaster cast, maybe it's a slight fracture, maybe it's a little foot fracture. They don't need to be in the cast, they can be in a boot, then these are great. But if you're an adult, these walker boots with an air pump are the go. Now, there's two types. You're probably wondering which one you should use. If you've got something like an Achilles rupture or repair, you're gonna be in a tall walker boot. If you've had an ankle fracture or a bad ankle sprain or ankle surgery, you're gonna be in a tall walker boot. Now, the reason for that is anything that's from ankle upwards you need to be in a tall walker boot. Now that is because this height here is gonna lock you up here, which stops the ankle movement, okay? So you wanna stop ankle movement, you wanna be high up here. If you've got a foot problem, so maybe you've got, uh, you had foot surgery, okay? Maybe you had a sort of midfoot sprain, you can get those. Maybe you've had toe surgery or toe fracture, or even just a stress fracture from a lot of overuse, like say you're a, a massive runner, or your massive dancer or something like that, and you've got a stress fracture, then a short walker boot is for you. You don't need the tall ones because the ankle movement's okay, and you'll get a bit of ankle movement when you have you know, a short walker boot. You're just trying to limit what's happening in the foot. But let's focus on how to put this tall one on, because many of you are probably sort of wondering, they're looking and going, how do I get that on and off? It's actually quite easy. With this one, I'd always be probably in bare feet. Usually if you have a sock, Remember, these give compression. If you've got a sock on there, you'll get a compression line going on around there. I'd rather have no sock, and yes, they do get stinky, but hey, you can just wash this in a line fabric. When they come, they come obviously all done up like this, and they come with three things inside, usually three little pads. They're for around those sort of people who have got a bit of sensitivity around the ankle, or they've got skinny ankles, and they don't fill out the boot very much. Just put them over there for a moment. Um, they also come with two things here. Now, if you notice, these things you got to pull those out because that is actually just protecting the velcro here from the padding here so those just ripping those out means you're going to stick to the side so we'll just keep them in for now but when you get those take those ones out and then the whole thing is going to fit together a little bit better so what you do is make sure that when you put this one on it has got an inflate and deflate you want to work on deflating it so open that up and that'll let all the air out okay don't worry about this sort of Reebok type pump thing there for the moment. Take your instructions out. Um, when you put these on, obviously you want it really nice and snug. The best thing to do, obviously take all these out, and you'll get used to this, you'll find it's a real sort of, bit of a rig and roll to start with, but get the whole thing loosened off so you can get that whole plastic thing away. All right, take this one off, take these ones out, it's almost like opening a present. Now. You want to get your whole foot, obviously underneath all this, right at the back, okay? So have a look at sort of where it is. You're going to be right at the back here, okay? So not so you're hitting the plastic, but just so it's nice and snug. And then obviously make sure you've got the right size boot. When you close this up, you want that your toe not to be over the edge, okay? So I'm in a large boot because I'm a size 12, so that's a perfect fit for me. If your foot's hanging away, then you're in the wrong size boot. You've got to have a whole foot protected by that shell. So first thing you do, put that over and keep it not super, super tight, but just snug. Because remember, the air pump is going to pressurize everything else. And you don't want too much pressure in here, especially if you've got some swelling going on there. Okay, and remember, when you stand up, 
your foot will go a little bit longer. So just make sure that it's not too tight up in here, it's making your toes sore, okay? Then get this one around here, okay? And like I said, when that's ripped off, it'll stick nicely to that. But get that around there, snug it in tight, and wrap around. Now, just before you sort of go all the way, these ones here, we'll take these ones out. These are three pads you've probably been given in your boot that pad out your ankle in any sort of sensitive areas or if you just want to make your sort of ankle padded out. I've got a skinny ankle obviously, but these are for perhaps, say you've got an Achilles problem, you might want to put it perhaps at the back, okay, around that Achilles, so the padding supports around that Achilles tendon. You might have a sensitive scar, you might want to put it around there, okay, and the other one could sort of buffer up the other side. So. When they're in like that, it just sort of thickens up your ankle a little bit. So when it compresses, it compresses that nice softness around that. So some people like that, some people don't need it. Anyway, once you've got that in, wrap it around and bring that over so this meets, if you look at that, this meets nicely. And if you can basically get it so that pump is sitting roughly in the middle of the boot, okay? Then, I might have to bring that over a little bit. Bring it over like that. There you go, that's pretty good. Now, with this one, you've got to get this plastic all in a line. You can see why there's a bit of a pain in the bum to take on and off. Start off though, lowest one first. Get that in there, and at least get that one sitting in the right place and put it. Now, you go, oh, that's a bit tight. Remember, it's going to pump up a bit. So just be careful that you don't go too tight initially. You can always tighten it up and readjust it, especially after a little bit of walk around on it. You might find that you can, you know, you need to adjust it as you get going. Put them all through. It's pretty self-explanatory. One will go one way. One will go another. You can see that one's around a different way, that one. And then this one here. And I'm struggling to work out where to put that. There it is. And there you go. And you've got it. Right, you've got it on. Now, close the valve here. Okay, so this one, close it up and then pump away. Now, people sort of say, well, how long do I need to pump that for? You'll say, oh, just keep going until you feel it. And you keep going and then you eventually feel it sort of tighten around your whole ankle. And you go, oh, okay, now I feel it. And then you just go, how much do I need? to feel really safe and sort of snug in there. And obviously you don't want it too much because it quite, you know, especially after say a surgery or an acute rupture or something where you've got a lot of swelling, the swelling, the pressure on it may hurt a little bit. So you want enough to keep everything stable, but you don't want too much that it hurts too much. So if you tighten it up and you start walking around, it's a bit sort of too tight, just deflate it a little bit, tighten it up, see if that's a bit better. So the hardest thing about these is walking on it. You'll find that oh, it's really hard to start walking on. You'll get used to that, and eventually you'll find that just walking is, is normal, okay? And they're actually really, really comfortable, and it's a lot better than walking around in a normal shoe. You'll feel like there's almost no pain with these things. So you notice when you get walking on these things, if it starts moving like that, you haven't tightened it up enough, okay? So can you see now, I thought, oh, okay, that was tight, and then now I'm moving, you've got some movement there. So what you've got to then do, okay, is then work on trying to get that tighter through here so you stop moving so much and really see if you can get a nice snug position. So when you move, okay, it stops moving there and that limits your ankle movement. Just, just be careful of that. Now, if you're one of those people who needs to walk with crutches, maybe you're partial weight bearing with a boot, maybe you're straight out of surgery or you're not allowed to put weight on it, you've got to be in a boot but not allowed to put weight on it too much, like partially, I'll teach you how to walk with crutches and also when you come out of that boot you may still be on crutches and then we'll go through what to do to get rid of that limp. So check the next video out on how to walk with crutches and how to get rid of your limp.